Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market prep video for May 4th, 2023. So, for all of you uh, Star Wars fans out there, may the 4th be with you. Um, <laughs> let's take a look at um, the markets and how they shaped up after yesterday's FOMC announcement. We had a little bit of selling. We had a little bit of uh, pressure here on the markets, but who knows? There may be some things in the in the works for today that can provide us a little bit of lift. So let's settle in. Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Thursday edition to the morning market prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thanks so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. Let's take a look at these charts, see if we can figure out how we may want to approach the market for today. Well, with all of the earnings blustering and all of the economic data and now the FOMC out of the way, we are still stuck in the same trading range that we have been in for uh, a good month. And um, it is a wide choppy trading range that has probably been pretty punishing to um, uh, you know, swing traders, position traders um, accounts. And um, this volatility could easily continue today with a huge, huge number of earnings reports that will include Apple after the bell, highly anticipated. And then of course, economic data coming in today. And then we still have those regional banks running into lots and lots of trouble with PacWest now um, under the gun. So let's take a look here what we've got going. As you can see, we've got a little bit of bearish pressure here in the pre-market pushing down here this morning. Um, I think if, those bears stay engaged look for a retest of this support area here in the chart the bottom side of that range to see if that holds and if that were to fail well unfortunately it's a pretty big drop to uh, next levels of support it could be pretty painful if we were to push on down into some of these levels of the diamonds chart now keeping in mind looking at this um, we are headed toward that 50-day moving average and, and i would say uh, at this point in time it really wouldn't be all that difficult to see that 50-day morning average tested so we'll want to watch for that possibility here in the chart now if the bulls can find inspiration today and there's every reason to believe that they could the way the market's been trading well then we'll start looking at you know these resistance levels up in here we've got some here just a second my system changed tools on me here so give me just a second if you look right across there we have resistance right in that area of the chart we've got resistance in this area of the chart that could stop us for any upside move and then of course we could come all the way back up here to retest that big resistance area if those bulls get really excited now unfortunately at this point in time we're going to have to you know fess up to the fact that this upside trend um, is no longer an upside trend that we are kind of searching for a trend at this point in the chart and we're trying to hold on to this downtrend break uh, big downtrend break area trying to hang in there on that level to hold it as support um, we could see a little bit of bearishness really come in if that were to fail and we were to confirm that with a downside move. Then let's take a look at our SPY, SPY also pulling back here this morning, finding some pressure now this trading range that we have been in for better than a month continues to exist and just like in the diamonds um, we'll see if we can hold this area in here or if we're going to have to push on down to retest this last uh, last low here in the chart you can see there's price support across there as well so i would suggest probably somewhere between here and here if those bears find inspiration today to continue pushing to the downside if those bulls find inspiration today well then we would look once again for these levels right up in here maybe look a little bit higher and then of course 
right back up there to the top if those bulls can continue to be inspired. Once again, this trend, I think we're really going to have to um, come to terms with the fact that uh, we've lost that trend completely with this uh, lower low and then um, retest of the high and we just can't get anything going here so we're looking for a new trend here in the spy and once again on the technical side of things you can see there really is a possibility that we could be moving on down to test our 50-day moving average here soon so watch that close then if we take a look at our QQQ, now QQQ has been the strongest of the index. I'm going to leave this trend still green to the upside because we really haven't broken it down. We've had a lot of fluctuation in price, but QQQ has held up pretty well. You can see we've got a little softness here this morning and nothing major at the moment. Um, so if those uh, bears find inspiration, I would expect maybe a test down here at this trading range that we've been stuck in for a month and if um, those bulls find inspiration well maybe we retest this up here and there's certainly reason to believe that there could be a retest of one of these levels um, after the bell tonight we're going to have apple earnings and apple of course can move the market in a huge way if apple were to disappoint would not be a surprise at all to me to see uh, the QQQ opening down here Friday morning. If Apple uh, comes in with very strong earnings reports and gets celebrated by its, its earnings reports, it would be not at all uh, out of the question to see the QQQ up here tomorrow morning because Apple is the heaviest weighted stock in the QQQ the SPY and the diamonds. So watch that closely and I would expect the possibility that we could see that big gap Friday morning. So be prepared for that. Um, let's take a look at our moving averages here and notice that our 50 day is still quite a ways away. But if those bears were to push down into here today and um, then Apple disappoint, it really wouldn't be a big surprise that we could test that 50 day moving average. Let's take a look at our IWM. Now, IWM continues to be the weakest of the indexes. A lot of pressure in here. We've got you know, considerable number of regional banks in the sector here. And of course, they're feeling lots and lots of pressure. Tried to shoot up yesterday, but doggone it, just started to uh, fade after the FOMC number. Uh, once again, we keep testing this resistance, keep testing this downtrend, and we're just not gaining any headway. Now this morning, we're down here testing this support area in the chart. So if those bears are um, inspired today, I might look for a break of this support level here, and then maybe a retest down into this area of the chart. If the bulls find inspiration, then of course we would look for that bounce back and a retest of these resistance levels here. Now, technically on this chart, it's just all ugly. Um, 50 is crossed down through the 200 day moving average again, uh, what they call the death cross. Um, all of our moving averages are providing upside pressure to the IWM. So it's, it's not a good situation here for this index. Let's take a look at our VIX. Our VIX kind of flip-flopped around a little bit yesterday, pushing up on after the FOMC with the selling that came in, but not as much as you would kind of expect with the big reversal that we saw on the day. So keep an eye on that. Um, if the bears find inspiration today, I would look for that to push on higher. And maybe we come up in here and we test some of these wicks and, and resistance levels here in the chart. If those bears uh, garner some um, support, if those bulls garner some, some support, well, then I would suggest we might pull back right back down into this level here. So keep a close eye on that. If we take a look at our T2122, interestingly enough, T2122 had a little bit of a bounce yesterday up off of this bullish reversal zone. And although we had those that selling coming in at the end of the day, it didn't turn it back down lower. So what that means here today is we've opened up an opportunity. If those bears find that inspiration, we've opened up that opportunity to the downside. So we'll want to consider that. 
And then we've still got a huge upside opportunity if those bulls can find inspiration in the data today. And boy, there's going to be a lot of that to go around. Let's take a look at our T2108. And what I mean is a lot of data to go around. Maybe not bullish, but a lot of data to go around. Yesterday we saw T2108 end up the day just pretty darn flat. Nothing really happened here. Um, it was a lot of hurry up and wait for the FOMC and then a disappointment from the FOMC for the market. And here we are again. You know, one thing I do want to mention is we have to kind of be considering this carefully. How many times has the market tried to tell the Fed what they should do and that they're going to do something to only have the market disappointed? Remember, the, the, mar uh, the Fed does a pretty good job of projecting where they're going to go. And for some reason, the market has gotten, uh, the speculation uh, trade in this market has gotten to the point where it, it thinks it knows more about what should occur here. And obviously that's been punishing a lot of folks. So consider that carefully. Remember, uh, pay attention to um, the actions FOMC actions. Pay attention to uh, when we get these reports from the big institutions. Oh, this company's got a 60% upside opportunity. Well, if they really believe that, they'd be buying it up heavily. And, and, and if you're not seeing them buy it, well, there's a reason for that. Um, pay attention to their actions more than their words, um, unless their words are being backed by their actual actions. And this has been tripping up a lot of traders here for a long time and all this hype and energy. Oh, the Fed's going to pivot. The Fed's going to pivot. The Fed's going to pivot. Uh, it just hasn't played out um, so far. So kind of keep that in mind. Now, if we get um, that bearish inspiration today, I would look for a little bit of a test down here into this support area of the chart at T2108. If the bulls catch an inspiration today, well, let's see if we can retest up here around that 47 area in the chart. Um, if those bulls find that good inspiration here today to push, push on higher above that 40 day moving average. Let's take a look at our T2107. Now our T2107, also flat to lower yesterday it just couldn't get anything going um, it started out doing pretty well and then just really faded by the end of the day as you can see we're down here testing that support level so if the bears find um, a good push of inspiration today well i would look for maybe that support level to break and then maybe we're back down here testing some additional levels of support in t2107 if those bulls find inspiration we bounce off of this support area well let's look for these resistance levels up here for a retest on that pushback up our t2101 well it, it tried for a little while it was trying to show a hook um, to the upside uh, maybe a, a shift of that momentum to the upside but then after the fomc nope um, um, we turn that back around. Um, we continue to show momentum to the downside um, after the close yesterday. So kind of keep that in mind. Let's take a look at our economic calendar for today. And our economic calendar, well, it's it's got several things for us to be paying attention to. Um, we've got Challenger job cut report this morning. We're then going to hit the international trade in goods. Um, the market's been able to ignore this for a long time, even this is a terrible negative number. Um, we've been able to ignore it, so maybe we'll do that again today. Uh, jobless claims may be a little bit more difficult to ignore here this morning um, after that ADP number showed a rise in employment. So remember, last time we were disappointed with a big decline in initial job claims. Let's watch that carefully. If um, if if that disappoints again, that could also be uh, a downer for the market. If we see a, a large increase in those initial claims, then maybe we can find some bullishness in that news. And then keep in mind we've got productivity and costs, which are not expected to come in good, and a natural gas report. And then later on today, after some bond auctions, we've got the Fed balance sheet that doesn't 
typically move the market at all. And then of course we have that employment situation number uh, coming on Friday morning. So after we get through all of the craziness today, just keep in mind where you've got the uh, job situation number and then guess what? Here come the Fed speakers again. We're gonna have Cook and Bullard speaking tomorrow. So buckle up. <laughs> Looks like we could have an exciting day on Friday as well. Let's take a look at our um, earnings calendar here today. Now, guys, I can't cover all of the earnings that are on the calendar today. There is just a massive number, and it's uh, they're going to come at us hot and heavy today. So I will just cover just a couple here really quick. Uh, of course, Apple is going to be the most important of the day after the bell. But we're going to see reports from like AEP Today, uh, Team, um, SQ, um, CG, um, Carvana is in there, um, Race is in there, GoDaddy is in there, um, Iron Mountain will be reporting, we've got Kellogg's, we're going to have uh, uh, Planet Fitness in there. So there is a, a big number of reports today. So just be prepared for volatility, a lot of, a lot of data for uh, traders and investors to react to. So look for that wild volatility to occur today. How about we take a look at some stocks that could be setting up for today? But before we do that, guys, if you could do me that quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and then also click that bell icon. When that pops up, click on that son of a gun and um, um, be prepared for um, the next video that I produce. Um, you'll be able to catch that immediately. And then, of course, if um, you feel the video was useful or helpful, if you could please do me that favor, and that would be click those thumbs up buttons, leave a brief comment. Thank you so much. You guys, this week, you guys have been um, really um, um responding and and i truly truly appreciate that that helps a bunch and um, thank you so much for your kind efforts and your willingness to take the time to do that i i do truly truly appreciate it let's take a look at a few stocks and remember guys these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security as a matter of fact you're going to have to do your own due diligence and be very very careful here because well, obviously, uh, we have been chopping in such a such a range here and a big point range. It's um, it's hard to catch um, a good directional trade um, here in the market. Intraday traders are probably having a field day. That's just not my that's just not my place right now. But this has been a very challenging environment uh, for the market, and you can see for the better part of this year, we've spent most of our time stuck in this same price range. Um, let's take a look at some of these stocks and remember to um, follow your own trading rules, follow your own um, guidelines, never ever blindly follow someone else's trade idea. First off, I wanted to mention Disney again. Um, Disney tried to push up yesterday in uh, the you know, the bullishness that we saw early in the day it was trying to get something going here and then ended up pulling back by the end of the day so watch that closely if this can hold in here along this support area i think there is a possibility this could turn around and, and, and be a pretty darn bullish chart so so keep an eye on that it's hanging in there now of course it's got this big lawsuit with with uh florida that could Costs quite a bit of money, you never know, but watch that closely. You might want to take a look at Merck. Now, Merck is one of those charts that have been doing really well while a lot of the healthcare drug maker stocks are suffering quite a bit. Um, Merck holding in there, a little rest or pullback now, I think at this point would be appropriate. And if we could hold this support, prove to hold this support in there, maybe hang on to that trend. I'd look for the, the next upside opportunity to come along in that chart. Now, on the other hand, if I look at um, BMY, BMY, I think, is now um, clearly a, a short position. You do have to worry about the support level in here. 
but we rallied back into resistance. Man, found some heavy selling in there yesterday. Continuing to follow that downtrend, I would watch this for that opportunity that could continue to move lower. You might want to take a look at um, United Healthcare as another potential on that short side list. Um, pushing down, rallying back, finding that resistance and well, that could be a problem if we lose this trend and support here in the chart. So watch that one closely. And then on the other hand, let's take a look at Eli Lilly. I don't know how many hands I have today, but Eli Lilly, oh my goodness, talk about a drug maker that's been um, hitting on all cylinders, just roaring to the upside here with uh, new drugs that seem to be doing very, very well and continuing to stretch out. And I wouldn't chase this. I think a rest or pullback would set up an opportunity here in that chart. Let's take a look at some of our industrials. Now our industrials have been one of those areas that's really held the diamonds in this trading range. As you can see, it's been holding this uh, uh, trading range for some period of time here. And now we're starting to see a little bit of bearishness showing up here. Running into some resistance, pulling back. If we take a look at our technicals or moving averages, failing under our 50, you can actually see a moving average squeeze that is formed over the top of Boeing. I would keep an eye on that. There is certainly the pressure uh, maybe building here on Boeing for a downside move. Now, I'm not suggesting it just falls or goes terribly to the downside, but maybe a retest down in here um, would be possible. And there's certainly some uh, plenty of move in there to make some money on that one. Um, you may want to take a look on the um, tech side, um, AMD, that big disappointment, that failure at the 50-day moving average. I think any rally back up into this uh, downtrend area would be an opportunity to maybe uh, take AMD short. Now on the long side, if we take a look at NVIDIA, NVIDIA is holding in there strong. Um, as a matter of fact, this pop out of this resistance area, this little resting pullback, I think sets up the possibility of an upside opportunity there in NVIDIA. It doesn't report until 524, so you got plenty of time on that for that upside move. So there's a few stocks for you to consider today, something for your list. Hey, I wanna wish you all a fantastic day. Thank you so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. I want to wish you all the very, very best, um, a productive and profitable day, and we will see you right back here bright and early Friday morning. Have a great one, everyone.